this is a quick start video just to get you going um, so what you need is you need your digigurdy you've got this lead which has a angle connect to one end and a USB mail the other end and then I would suggest an iPad an iPhone will work just as well and if you're into um, audio workstations you can use it with a PC but let's say you're using an iPad that's the easiest just to demo so depending on your iPad um, it'll have different input sockets so mine has the lightning connector here if you can see that and this adapter is female on the other end and this is called an Apple um, camera USB camera adapter so depending on what you attach this to you you need to buy this but I can give you a suitable link now there's no battery in here it's powered from the iPad so we'll undo the cable and you can see you plug it in there okay and then you connect your camera adapter to that end and then this goes into the iPad so you need some software to run on the iPad and the software and again I'll give you a link um, it's called BS16i so I'll just type in my secret code and this is BS16i okay and there's different views that's the view we want it's like a mixing desk and you can see there are multiple channels each channel is a string or a sound that the hurdy-gurdy makes so um, the first thing you'll do is download something called a sound font file now that is all the audio recordings from a hurdy-gurdy for each note all compressed into one file and you'll download that from a link that I'll give you using your iPad so you go onto your iPad you'll find the link and you'll download it so that will end up in your downloads folder so if we go to settings here wavetables in the app they're called wavetables see and we have different libraries of sounds library one general user GS soft synth that comes with the app so library two I've got it here, Vienna Alto Mod 14, if I click on that. Um, you can see there's, a, there's an option here to import a wavetable file. So if you click on that, you can find it in your downloads and click on it and import it. So it, it sits there and it's library number two. So we'll just close this. So now you need to set up your instrument. So let's just for simplicity, we're going to use detuning so string one is my high melody string you can see there we'll click on that and you'll see from the menu it says library there we've got library two which is not the default one you can use a default one if you want it'll just sound like a guitar or a piano perhaps anyway library two um, my high melody string is a high d steel melody string that I've selected so that's good second melody string that's an octave lower also that's a high D steel melody string I've selected from the menu if you're in say G tunings you might select a high G melody string for example next string string three there's the three is the trumpet string high D trumpet is selected and then the drone is string four high D drone now the next one, the buzz sound. I've selected a buzz from a, there's a, a range of buzz sounds, but I've selected, you can see there, Nige Buzz Pajo Loud. Okay. And then this one is the key click sounds. Gerdies make key click sounds. So for, in the same menu, the same sound font, there are some clicky clacky key click, click sounds, which you may or may not want. Now you see there's a volume nut slider for each channel just get in focus there so i've got here i've got my melodies quite high my trumpet and my drone lowish my buzz is quite loud key click just a smidge 
These other two, 7 and 8, are not used. It actually says stereo grand piano. You can see they're down, the volume there's low. I've got a master volume, which I've just put up to full. Um, so there we go. So I'm going to plug it in. And now you'll see the DigiGurdy will power itself up. So you see the screen on the DigiGurdy is powering up. So I'm going to go to holding the camera manually now. Just go, I'm not going through all the menus because this is the quick start guide, remember. Number one is load preset, option one. Right, remember, we use the keys to enter things in the menu. This is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if I want option one in the menu, I'd press this key. This is the X key referred to in the menus. That is, that rejects things. So if you're um, selecting something, you press this key in the menu to confirm, and this key is to reject. Okay, so I'm going to press key one. What do we get now? We get four tunings. So I'm going to set a, a preset tuning. I'm going to get tuning three, which is detuning. So I'm going to hit key three. All right, and select tune there. Now it shows you what string. High melody D5, low melody D4, trumpets D4, drone D3. Okay. We also have transpose buttons, which will. Uh, sorry, they they are active later. Sorry, up and down an octave, capo on and off. That's what these three buttons are for. But we'll come to that later. So if you want to select, accept is the A or the one key. Um, it's a bit confusing. Basically, this key, top right, is to accept things. Top left, reject things. So we're going to accept that. Okay. Right, crank on. It reminds me the tunings on each string. Okay. So if I turn the crank, maybe some noise will come out. And it does. Now, you heard the... Uh, the buzz sound there, where did that come from? If you crank more than a certain speed, you'll get a buzz sound. The sensitivity, the speed above which the buzz comes in, is set with this knob. So we go that way, what happens? It's less sensitive. Go this way. It's too sensitive, so you just find the sweet spot. Some people crank fast and some people crank slowly. Right, remember this is the override, so if you want to simulate constant cranking, you press this. There we are. And then I can play little tunes. And it shows you what notes you're playing. So that's the can't be bothered button. If you can't be bothered to crank, but you just want to practice tunes, that's what this button's for. Um, this is the quick start guide, so I won't go into any other things, but there are other features. You can plug a wireless MIDI transmitter in here, which pairs with your iPad without using the cable. And if you do that, you've got to put a battery into here, rechargeable battery, and I provide the little device there for you to put the battery in. But for the, the easiest possible setup is cable to iPad, um, use the iPad speaker or plug in a little rechargeable speaker or plug in headphones into your iPad and off you go. This remembers the previous settings. So once you've set it up the once, that's it. You turn it on, it'll be in this tuning with these strings selected. You'll just select option three when you turn on the um, device, the DigiGurdy, and then you can just carry on practicing in the same tuning you were using last time. Um, more advanced features, you can have custom tunings. You can save each string individually and save them to memory and have them come up as a custom set of presets that you can select. Um, and there are a number of other effects and features in this software as well, but that should just cover you for the absolute basics. Um, these keys, this uh, is a pause key. Press it while you're playing. So we're in playing mode. It gives you options to turn the drones on or off, 
trumpet on or off, bring them in sequentially, as many people do when they're playing a Gurdy tune. You start with the melody string, then the next melody string, then bring in the drones. Um, it allows you to do all this sort of thing. There's a lot of other features hidden. Um, but that's enough just to get you going, because I appreciate some people are very techy and they like the hurdy-gurdy because of the technology. Other people are very musical and they're a bit scared of the technology. So actually, don't be frightened. It's a few minutes to set it up initially. And then after that, you can just plug and go and play each time you want to practice very quickly. There's one other feature I need to show you. Um, on a real hurdy-gurdy, there's a wheel here with strings rubbing on it and the resistance to turning the crank is formed because of the, the friction of the strings rubbing on the wheel. So to simulate that, we have this arrangement. This is like a brake pad from a drum brake in a car. And this is the, the wheel that it rubs against, which goes in here. And it works like a very weak, very inefficient drum brake. And the uh, the braking force is adjusted with this tuning peg. Um, and you see there's a spring in there. And it basically just very, very slightly grips the drum brake um, to produce just a little bit of friction, smooth friction, to simulate the friction of the strings. So that is why you have this here. So you see when I turn this it doesn't freely spin. There's a slight bit of friction. And just other things, you've got proper bearings with uh, ball bearing races here and here which should last practically forever. And you can see that one there. And you've also got them in the handle. So you get a really nice feel to it. And lastly, um, you can see there are cutouts here. There are basically three large inspection hatches in the underside, which I'll show you in this one. There. So if anything needs fixing or adjusting, which is unlikely, but if it did, you can get in from underneath and do it. And also the key box has held on magnetically. These are the magnets. They're not just stuck down with glue because they always come undone. They're actually embedded. They're like rod magnets embedded in 3D prints. So they will not break free and come off. And it does actually have tangents and they act on micro switches, you can see. And the keys actually go through the circuit board, which is here. So it's a rather unusual circuit board. If you wanted to paint it, you could use a metric hexagonal screwdriver, take all the tangents off, they just screw down into the key stems, there's no nuts on the back, and then the keys slide out. Um, if you were painting it, just be careful not to get paint into the holes, otherwise you're going to have to file them out because uh, the keys will stick. So just be very careful if you do that. It's made of a very nice ply, you get this lovely finish. It's not the rough finish you see with many um, laser cut plies, use the best ply I can get and um, so it looks nice as it is but if you did want to paint it that's how you would do it. So the lid goes on like that and of course if you want you can just paint the lid 